The Electronic TENS Therapy Pain Relief Kit, called Dr. Pocket, uses transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation through electrodes in a pad that sits on the user's skin. This device delivers electronic pulses to the electrodes in multiple modes of different pulse frequencies. Dr. Pocket works via a smartphone app, as do several other TENS devices. We tried Dr. Pocket in its various modes and intensities. Users have their choice of eight modes and can customize a session to have different modes kick in at different times and at different intensities. The output consists of 100 microsecond pulses coming at rates of 1.2, 20, 62.5, 100, and 160 hertz, depending on the mode, and a swept frequency mode spanning 12.5 to 55.5 hertz. The small electronics module measures about 3 by 1.1 inches. The module includes a crisp display that gives readouts of operation mode, time remaining, and stimulation level when the device is operating. It also shows the level of charge when the device is hooked to the charger. One interesting aspect of Dr. Pocket is that it doesn't need mechanical snaps to connect the electrode pad to the electronic module, as is the case with most TENS devices. Instead, it uses magnetic connections. The user merely places the electronic module's connection terminals near the pad terminals, and the magnets do the rest. Ditto for the connections to the charger. The electronics module disassembly starts by removing the translucent cover that sits over top the display readout. The cover pops off to reveal four small Phillips screws holding the case together. Thankfully, these screws are not so small that they demand a special screwdriver. The circuit board inside the case does indeed attach with super small Phillips screws, as are common in consumer electronic devices. The display readout is held against the case by the 3.7 volt lithium ion battery. This side of the PCB also contains the two push button controls and the side mounted mechanical on off switch. Virtually all of the rest of the components sit on the other side of the PCB. Two ICs run the whole show. One is an NRF51822 SOC Bluetooth low energy device from Nordic Semiconductor. This chip contains an ARM Cortex type CPU. The brains of the device is an N76E003 chip from Nuvotan in Taiwan. This chip basically mimics the instruction set and architecture of the old 8051 processor originally from Motorola. One particular aspect of the 8051 architecture worth noting is the built-in six-channel pulse width modulation output. This feature would seem to come in handy for developing the various square wave signals necessary for driving the electrode pads. The section of the device devoted to driving the electrodes seems to include 10 discrete transistors and a tank circuit consisting of a 4.7 microfarad capacitor and what is either a 2.5 microhenry or 2.5 millihenry coil. We don't know which because the markings for both inductor values are the same. The multiplier depends on the coil manufacturer, which we also couldn't discern. At any rate, these values imply a tank circuit resonant frequency of either 464.3 or 146.8 hertz, respectively. It should also be noted that the PWM output of the Nuviton chip is optimized for driving electric motors. The six channels are there for handling three-phase electric motors. It's possible Dr. Pocket uses all six channels or a subset of them in parallel to get a higher output for the excitation modes that require a higher output. We can glean some of the functions of Dr. Pocket's drive electronics from patents filed by Neurometrics, a noted developer of the earlier TENS device called the Quell. It's likely Dr. Pocket's basic operation resembles that of the Quell. As the Neurometrics patent explains, the Quell uses a current source rather than a voltage source to drive the electrodes because stimulation current is independent of the impedance between the electrode and the skin, which changes while the device is in use. The voltage, of course, will change if the impedance changes. Thus, it's likely Dr. Pocket also synthesizes a current source to drive the electrode pad. The Quell, however, drives its electrodes with a single in-channel power MOSFET typically used in AC-DC power supplies. In that Dr. Pocket seems to be using up 
to 10 transistors in its electrode driver, it seems as though its electrode drive is completely different than what the Quell does. Something you find on the Quell and not on Dr. Pocket is an accelerometer. The Quell is designed so the user can walk around wearing it, and walking around can cause momentary changes in how much the electrode touches the skin. These momentary interruptions can shut off the device. The accelerometer is there to tell the processor that the interruptions it's seeing are only temporary, so it shouldn't shut down. Dr. Pocket, on the other hand, isn't designed to be worn by someone who is wandering around and bumping into things, so it doesn't need an accelerometer on board to warn that such things are happening. Finally, we should note we got an early version of the TENS device that would account for a couple of fabrication shortcuts we noted that are common in prototypes but aren't good practice for products in final production. Most notable of these is that the battery wires are soldered directly to component leads rather than onto the PCB solder pads. One of the solder connections is a five pin chip which contains markings that are ambiguous but which we surmise probably handles the battery charging. Also on the PCB is a solder jumper lead that we suspect will disappear when the TENS device reaches volume production. And the insulation tape that isolates the charging and electrode terminals from the rest of the circuitry were obviously placed there by hand, but we suspect people who buy production versions of Dr. Pocket won't have units with these little idiosyncrasies. That's about all the time we have for our stimulating discussion of the Dr. Pocket Nerve Stimulator. For more teardown videos like this one, go to eeworldonline.com.